In this tutorial, you'll learn how to use the Power Trace feature in CorelDRAW to convert a JPEG to a vector image. A JPEG is a type of raster image, which means that it's defined by a set number of pixels. So if you scale it up or down, you'll begin to see a loss in quality. Vector images, on the other hand, allow you to scale your image to any size without loss of quality. JPEGs are just one type of raster image, but you could follow this tutorial with any other type, like a TIFF or a PNG. So once you have a new document opened in CorelDRAW, we'll go to File, Place, or just hit Command-I to import the sample image. Then just click anywhere in your document to place the image, and I'll hit Shift-P to center it on the page. With the image selected, we'll go up to the interactive toolbar, open the Trace Bitmap menu, and choose Outline Trace, then Logo. Now in the Trace Bitmap window, your original JPEG image will appear on top, with the traced image that we're working on appearing on the bottom. So as you can see, there are some details missing from our trace image right now. So over here in the Settings panel, we'll first drag the Detail slider until the trace adequately resembles our original image. And that looks a little bit better, but as you can see, we're still missing a couple little spots here. So I'm going to drag it all the way up to 100. Next, we'll use the smoothing slider to adjust edge smoothness. And you can see as we go a little bit further here on the slider that we start to lose some of our definition on the edges. So we'll dial that back a little bit. And the same thing with corner smoothness, which will help us adjust the sharpness of our corners. This tool is particularly helpful in bringing definition to the text in the image. One way to see the effects of these sliders a little bit more easily is to go up to the top left and switch to wireframe overlay view, which will just allow you to see your edges in a little bit more detail. So I'll go back to before and after now, and then we'll take a look at the remove settings. So by default, the remove dropdown will be set to background color with automatically selected. The gray and white checkerboard behind your traced image represents transparency, indicating that our background has been removed. So in this case, the automatic function has done a good job at taking out the background behind our logo. Now we'll just quickly take a look at the object settings beneath the remove settings. Merge adjacent, which we have checked, is going to combine adjacent objects of the same color within your trace. So if we uncheck that there, we can see that power trace creates a little bit of distance between some of our objects of the same color. We don't want that because it doesn't look like our original image. So we'll turn it back on. Remove overlap will delete parts of objects that are hidden by overlapping objects. If we take that off, we see a similar effect, so we're going to leave it on. And lastly, group by color will group all objects of the same color that Power Trace creates. So when you're done creating your trace, if you have six total colors in your image, you'll also have six object groups. We'll leave that off for now. Finally, you have the option to delete your original image, which will simply remove the JPEG that we started with from our page once we finish our trace. It's often a good idea to hold on to your original image, just in case your trace doesn't turn out perfect and you need the original image for reference. Now let's take a look at the colors panel. On the top here, you can use the color mode dropdown to change your color space if necessary. For example, if you're creating this file for print, you might change it to CMYK. Then you can change the number of colors allowed in your trace, which will cause the program to prioritize the more prevalent colors and combine similar colors into a single color. If you click on a color from your colors list, your traced image preview will show diagonal lines through areas of that color, which indicates that that color is selected. If you'd like to consolidate similar colors manually, hold the control key and click to select multiple colors. Then just click merge below. This will change all objects of those colors into a single color that's the average of the ones you selected. In our case, the two whites merged into a slightly off-white. So to change it to pure white, we can just select the color and click Edit. Then we'll drag the color slider to pure white and hit OK. And now that we've been through all our settings, we'll click OK to finish our trace. Back on the page, our trace is lying directly on top of our original JPEG. So we'll drag them away from each other to put them side by side for comparison. And to really see the difference between the raster image and the vector image, we'll go up to View Modes and select Wireframe. And there you'll see all the vector lines created by Power Trace. So our vector image came out pretty close, but as you can see, the outline of our circle isn't exactly circular anymore. 
So first I'll just get rid of our original JPEG, and then to improve that circular edge, I'll select the trace, and holding down the shift key, I'll double click on the rectangle tool in the left hand toolbar, which will create a rectangle around our logo. Next, we'll select the shape tool, and then holding down shift again, drag the corner of the rectangle in towards the center of the logo until the rectangle becomes a perfect circle. Then up on the interactive toolbar, we'll click send to back to put that circle behind our trace. We'll again select the trace, then click ungroup up on the interactive toolbar to separate the objects that make up our trace. Click off the image to deselect, and then holding shift, I'll select all the black background areas of the logo and click delete. Then we'll select the circle we just created and double click on the black square in the color palette on the right, which will add a perfectly circular black background. Finally, we'll click and drag around the entire logo to select all the separate objects and click group to group them back together. And now you can see if we select our image and scale it up, there's no loss in detail or quality. Now you know how to convert a JPEG into a vector image. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to the Discovery Center tutorial page. Here you can download a written version of the tutorial along with the sample image used in the video.